Hello everyone, Servo here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Now today we're going to be checking out Small Lands Survive the Wild. This is an indie game that just came out today and I think it was like 20 or $25. The developers did send me a review copy of this game. It's not sponsored or anything like this. So all my, all the opinions in this video are going to be my own. And uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at it. So you go ahead and you create a character, you name them, and then you have some customization options here. So like eyebrows, we got beard. I could do a full beard, sideburns, uh, old ways, chops, and we got different colors for our beard. We have antenna colors. So we have purple, orange, red, and green. We're going to go with green, hair. Um, I'm just going to make a random character. I, I never go with long hair, but we're going to in this video. Um, it, it all looks good. We got some face markings. Let's do something like that. And let's go ahead and start this up. All right, I'm gonna create a new world called Let's Play. I do have one already that I've been making a couple guides on, I have a few hours on. And you can choose to do like online so your friends can join or you can do peaceful where the bugs don't attack you unless you attack them. So that's good to start off with. Or you can just uncheck mark them both and join just a normal world. So I'm gonna start off with uh, normal. So we have Let's Play, let's go ahead and start this up. Now, if you guys do enjoy this series and you want to see more on this world, let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely continue to play it. Uh, the game seems to be very fun. It's sort of like Valheim meets Grounded. I'm not going to compare this to other games, but that's the idea of kind of how this game works out and plays out. So if you guys enjoy this, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so right off the bat, definitely a beautiful game. Uh, its graphics are kind of interesting, but the, the overall look of the game does look pretty nice. So we have Sentinel Virgil here. He says, greetings, I've been tasked with meeting all vanguards before they leave the burrows as I, I have crucial information. Continue to keep a keen eye trained for those owl effigies they are scattered throughout the area. Outside, you'll find Captain Hearn. He will help you on your first day. Okay, so these are the owl effigies. These are like a little tutorial. They tell you what to do. The overland is rich with natural resources of food, and some can only be harvested with the correct tool. You can craft different tools to harvest natural resources. Some resources can only be harvested with specific types of tools. Okay, so we have some uh, wood here, so make sure you gather everything. Like I said, I did play for a couple hours. I've been making a couple of guides. And one thing that's going to help you guys out a lot if you do decide to get this game is whatever key you use to pick up. So I have F, I'm on PC. Instead of just pressing F over and over, you can actually just hold down that button and it'll pick up everything in the area, which I did not find out for at least a couple hours in my playthrough. So let's go ahead and pick that up. We have another owl here. He says, when you examine an owl effigy, it reveals useful pieces of advice. This info is automatically logged in your compendium. Okay, so let's keep running around. See what this one says. Press tab to open our inventory. We got that. It's not our first rodeo on these survival games. Let's go ahead and grab this. Make sure you grab everything because you will need every resource that you come across. Whether it is fiber or wood or whatever. Just pick it all up. This one. The burrow's an extensive network of underground tunnels and caverns that is home to the small folk. Alright. That's just a little bit of lore on that one. Keep going. Let's get all this stuff. Lots of resin. We're going to need this for a lot of the basic materials in the game. We can even pick up this stuff here. We got some workers there. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I wish I could pick up all this stuff. There's so much there. Come on. Let me grab it. Can I access this? Nope. Keep going. And then I think they said we needed to talk to Hearn. He should be just up ahead. So out of the burrows and into the overland. This is... The beginning of your adventure. Beautiful. Majestic even. Let's see what these owls say. We have, you can lose health due to the variety of factors, being attacked by creatures, extreme temperatures, falling from great heights, or being malnourished. Now, they talked about weather because there are like seasons in this game. So you will be going through winter and there's also some like thunder and rainstorms, which is really cool. Grab some more wood there. Sprinting, sliding, dodging, jumping, attacking, blocking all you stamina. 
Uh, yeah, you can slide. I haven't really found much of a use for it. You can do that. You can dodge like so. And you can block, but you have to have a weapon. So let's go ahead and grab all this wood. Press M to open up the map. Let's take a look at the map. So here's the spawn. And the map is pretty large. So all of this is what we are going to explore. And uh, we are right here. So you can click on something to track where they are at. So we're going to go this way. If you look at the compass at the top, you'll see he is in that direction. Just line it up and keep heading that way. Get this. Check out the owl. Armor provides protection against different types of damage and can also keep you warm in cold weather. Some settlers in the overland have the expertise to make new sets of armor. So whenever you are playing, you actually don't craft the armor yourself. The NPCs in this game are how you craft armor. So you would go up to like Kern. He's going to give you your first two sets of armor. You still have to provide the resources. So could you craft some armor for me, Captain? You'd click on that. And then he's going to show you the two sets. So I have two sets I can craft with the uh, Hearn. So we have the padded set and the light set. The padded set is going to give me cold protection of nine for each piece, which is really good. Protection is only one and then it has 110 durability. The light set, instead of giving me protection against the elements, it's going to give me movement speed. So plus 2% for each piece, a total of 6% for that set. I don't think it's really worth it. I'm definitely going to go with the padded set to keep me warm during the nighttime when it's colder. So it's going to take fiber. To get fiber, we need to grab all of this. And then you can also activate your little antenna. And it will seek out all the resources in the world for you. Unfortunately, as of now, the resources on the ground do not like glow after you harvest them. So if I were to do that, you can't, it's hard to see them. So that's why I say hold that key down and it'll automatically pick up those resources for you. So we're going to go ahead and grab all of this and we're going to make that padded set because uh, we're going to need that. Make sure to eat and drink regularly. Being well nourished will make you more resilient and energetic as well as stronger in combat. You can find delicious berries in the forest, hunt creatures in the overland for food, or even cook your own meals. You can eat food raw or prepare it and other consumables using different types of cooking stations for a wide range of benefits. We got some food right here we can pick up and I don't think we can get this other stuff. Let's see what else Hearn has to say. So can I ask you a question? What's the overland? The overland is what we call the world or the surface. Uh, what tools should we craft? I'm going to teach you all this stuff. So how to build shelter. I'll teach you everything. Uh, it, it'll be okay. So we can skip all that. And I was told to report to you. Oh, yes. I have been expecting you. The elder Ludwig has requested your presence. Go see him once. And uh, he's staying at the cave down below. So you're just going to keep following that path there. If you see any owls with the glowing eyes, you have not talked to them yet. Uh, so this is just say find crafting recipes to learn how to craft new items. Typically, you will need a crafting station to craft new items. It's, it's the same as any other survival game. So let's keep going. And of course, grab every resource for your first playthrough. You want to grab all this stuff. We got sprouts over here. Lots of resin around. I'm going to farm up all the stuff in this area. And there's also a little... Oh shoot, I forgot, that's water. Don't go in the water, you will die. If you die, you drop a gravestone. The gravestone will be near where you died. And then when you press M, if you have trouble finding it, here's your gravestone, click on it, and you can track it on your compass. So I'm kind of glad it did. I did die so uh, you can see what happens, but I thought that was part of the land. I thought that uh that was a little like outcove area but it was it was water so don't do that don't make the same mistake i did let's go down here there's our gravestone we can click on it and we can get all of our resources back you can have more than one gravestone on the ground at a time we got another owl here stay away from deep water small folk can't swim upon death you will respawn to activate your bed or spawn location a tombstone will appear he tells me that after we jumped into the pond all right, let's go ahead and get this stuff. And keep making our way down here. So this is the little cave we're supposed to uh, go and talk to that guy. Ludwig, I believe is his name. The Elder. Elder, what are you doing in this overgrown cave? The jeweled clover key that unlocks the apothecary's chest has gone missing. I fear it may have been stolen. We are here trying to find some other means of opening the chest. So we have some stuff here we can talk about. Do you have any idea where the key is? The key was locked in a royal vault. 
which is always under heavy guard. Only the king and I are allowed entry. The theft was noticed when the queen became ill and the clover key was needed, but it could have happened some time ago. Ah, uh, yes, we've received troubling reports from overland settlers in the forest. So he is just going to tell us that we need to go seek out the other NPCs in the game. I'm not going to spoil that stuff for you. You can read all of those comments. Um, there is some more stuff back here, but it's mainly just that chest that he's talking about. So you can grab these resources, take a look at this chest down here, and then we are going to leave. The walnut chest, we can't open it. We're going to need a key. So let's head back out. All right, once you come out of the cave, just keep following along the little owls here. Temperature will generally drop at night and raise in the afternoon. Also, some creatures in the overland are nocturnal and will only come out at night. Build a bed to set a spawn point. So we're going to start claiming our tree. One of these giant trees, you can actually claim and use that to take to other players' worlds. So whatever you build on one of these giant trees up there at the top, Whenever you go to your friend's world, you will actually transfer that entire tree to their world. So you'll have your base and everything. So this game is pretty cool. I don't remember exactly how many players you can play together. I think it was in like 10 players together or something like that. It's a pretty insane. So your first POI is going to be the little owl statue. You can actually climb up there and get some stuff. But we are going to claim this tree. I'm going to show you exactly how you can claim these trees. You want to run and just keep climbing up the mushrooms. Now, there is a mantle system in this game. And to mantle, you want to hold down your jump button. So for me, I'm on PC. It's going to be space. When I jump, I just keep holding it down. And then when you hit a wall, you're going to go ahead and mantle up that. So I'm going to drop down here. And be careful because there is a lot of fall damage. So when you take, like, you don't even have to jump down very far. But you're going to take a lot of damage. So try not to do... Uh, too large of a drop otherwise you will die let's see if i can go up this way oh we got some uh spider or ants after us already we can just run away keep in mind your stamina system they are pretty fast but the ai in the game is kind of they're they're just not very intelligent so we're just going to run around and here is like the entrance to actually climbing this first tree. There are many other trees in the game, but this is the one that I'm going to grab right now. So let's go ahead and go this way. Jump over here. Jump up here. And uh, now we begin our adventure to the top of the tree. Little owl statue. Take your time. Like I said, if you fall, you're going to die and you're going to have to run all the way back over here. And that's not fun. So see how I'm mantling pretty easily. That's just by holding down the little jump button and you'll be okay. So let's roll off here and then climb up this. Keep making our way up to the top. I did like this like idea that you can claim an entire tree and build on it. You could just take it to other players worlds and stuff. That's really cool. Uh, not many games have in implemented something like that. Ooh, almost messed up my jump there. Keep going. We're almost at the top. It is quite a ways up here. All right, once we get to here, we just need to keep going this way. And whenever you find a new tree, you're going to have to climb this over and over for every new tree that you want to claim. Once you claim it, you're actually going to have like a hot air balloon that you can use as a lift to get up and down, which is really cool. And uh, I'm going to show you that feature as well. Go ahead. Get up here. Keep going. We're nearly there, I think. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge tree. I wasn't kidding. There's a lot. So if you're not good at jumping puzzles, you may not enjoy this portion. Now you can build anywhere else in the world. It doesn't have to be on the tree, and you can also claim a tree and also build anywhere in the world. That's the great thing about this game, is you're not limited as to, like, where you can build, which I really like. Keep going. There we go. There's the airlift. Now, to claim your tree, you want to go over here to this little, like, gnome and talk to him. So, we're going to hit examine. The spirit of the great tree is listening. What is it that you wish, Vanguard? I want to claim this tree. There we go. We have it. So now I can activate this and go down and activate it to go up. And we also have this huge area right here to actually build, which is awesome. We have a lots of space. 
no mobs or animals are going to attack you although i think the storm and the weather could still damage your uh structures and stuff so now we're going to go to our inventory we're going to go to crafting and we want to craft a builder's hammer this is like valheim this is how you actually build in this game so i can right click on that i have interactive we have foundations building and decoration so we're going to go to foundations it's going to take two wood and one fiber we are going to just do oh we can raise it up higher if we want or lower i'm just going to do something like so one two three four five six you know what we will build it like this hopefully i have enough resources for all this and now we're going to go to building and we're going to put some walls we can rotate them the building is actually like really snappy in this game i really like that go ahead and do that You can put windows too if you want, if you want to make it nice and fancy. Of course, you'll be building different structures throughout the game. So if you just want a starter one, this is fine. If you want to set a spawn point, you have to make a bed. And you do have to have a roof over that bed. Like the same square that your bed is on. Um, I messed that wall up. Hold up. If you want to destroy something, you can repair it with R if you're on PC. Or C to dismantle. And the great thing about dis dismantling in this game... Is uh, you get 100% of your resources back. Or at least right now. Unless they change it. Like I said it is in early access. So they may change it. So we got that. Now let's go ahead and put a door frame. Got the twigs facing the inside. And then we could do a window I guess. We'll, do, we'll just do one for now. And then now we need a door. It's right here. We're going to place the door down. Boom. And for roofs, you can get fancy if you're creative. I'm just going to do the standard leaf roof for the sake of this video. We'll do that. Go ahead and click on the rest of these. Two more. All right. Oh, are we out of resources? Dang, we're out of resources. That's okay. We will get some more in a second. And then for the bed, we're going to need fiber. So it looks like we still have wood. We need some more fiber. And you can make a campfire, which is a source of heat. That is a great way to stay warm and cook simple recipes. I recommend getting one of these. It doesn't seem like you have to like have a chimney in your house. You can just have the campfire sitting in here. So if we want to go back down, we just go over here to the lift. Click on that and it'll take us back down. Now, if you die and you spawn up here, but your lift is down there... All you have to do is go over here to your gnome friend and it'll he'll ask you if you want to call your lift and then it'll raise it back up. So that's really great. And then you can make this tree public so other players can join you and you can unclaim this tree if you would like. So let's go ahead and head down and get some more fiber. Take me down to the root level please and let's -a go. Now, of course, whenever you're farming stuff later on over here, you could claim other trees and go there. Or you could just build a base with like a little small outpost, which is what I've been doing. Because it's not fun to have to keep running all the way back to your spawn base. And then take this lift up and down, up and down all the time. So having multiple bases is a great idea in this game. And a lot of the recipes, like the beginning, like building stuff, it really is not that expensive. So we have some ants here we're gonna try and avoid. If you are on peaceful, like I said, they're not gonna they're not gonna bother you. So put your hammer away so you can actually dodge and run and stuff. And let's go get some twigs. Alright, we made it back, but we are almost dead. But we got some resources. So let's go ahead and place a bed down. It is nighttime, so let's go ahead and sleep off the first night. You just place your bed down and then you go over there, activate spawn point, and now you can just use it. You can only sleep at nighttime. And unfortunately, there's not really a clear indicator when it's morning. Your character just jumps in there and then he jumps out and uh, now it's morning. So they, they definitely should add or work on some sort of animation for that. Now that we have our bed down, we have a spawn, spawn point set. We can craft the workbench, which is wood, fiber, and resin. You have been watching me gather that for most of this vi a video. So it's like really simple stuff to get. We're going to go ahead and place the workbench down. Now we can put our ham hammer away and then we're going to access this. 
So this opens up a whole slew of new items. We have simple bandages, which I need, and it takes some fiber. The simple bandage is going to give you three health over 10 set or three health every second for 10 seconds. So it's going to take 10 seconds and then I get 30 health back total. It's right here. We have our health, our stamina, nourishment is our food. So we're running low on food. And then we have our temperature, which is we're pretty comfortable right now. Our status is sheltered. We're in a house. I do need to finish putting this, but you're sheltered as long as you're standing under a roof. As you see, my status now, I'm not sheltered. And then over here, I am sheltered. So that's how it works. Now, to actually have and craft stuff at the workbench or craft in general, you have to have this stuff in your inventory, which is a shame because your inventory is pretty dang small. So you're going to have to keep later on in the game when you have a ton of resources and stuff. You're going to have to keep going through your chest, grab your resources, and then come to your specific bench and craft the stuff. Uh, over here on our slots, we have like if you have a bow, you can put it in one of your hands here. You have your ammo here, and then here's your armor, which we can still go get the padded set, but we're going to have to farm up a lot of fiber to be able to get, uh, get that. Now, we can craft a wood hatchet, which we're going to grab. You can click on this and put it in your hotbar, but unfortunately, it still takes up a slot in your inventory, even though it's in your hotbar slot, which I'm not a fan of that at all. Uh, then we have a wood sword, which is pretty strong. We got a simple bow, which is not very good, uh, even in the beginning. A pickaxe, which we will need, but we're going to have to kill a bull ant and get the mandible. You're going to need that to be able to get stone and then later like flint. We have some uh, wood arrows, fire arrows, a pet whistle. That way when we tame something, you can have it teleport to you. And then our first thing that we can actually tame is a ladybug. And you just have to grab one of these kits. It takes three mushrooms, two nectar, and five fiber. So that's what's going on in this. And if you want to repair stuff, click up here at repair and I can repair my armor. If you haven't used much durability, you can repair it for free. But say my axe, I've used half of the durability, which is the green bar here. It's going to take some of the resources that you use to build it to actually repair it. So that's how the repairing and all that works. Now that we have the basics, it's pretty much just go and farm up a lot of those resources, which I'm going to do. And then I'll show you uh, the next step. Now, the first bit of food you're probably going to want to get is these edible mushrooms. Uh, it's just a mushroom, brown mushroom. You can find them all over the place. Once you have your hatchet, you can go up there and harvest it. Obviously, higher tier hatchets will be able to break these things in two hits and then in one hit. But for now, we're just going to have to whack them. Now, you can eat the edible mushrooms right away or you can get the crafting pot and actually cook them into an even better recipe that gives you, I think, 30 food. So uh, it's definitely worth crafting that. Harvest these whenever you see them because you're going to need food. Food isn't a huge thing in the game. Like, I know some games it's really annoying, especially Ark Survival Evolved you're you're hungry like every two seconds in that game and this one it's not so bad it's really not so whenever you see some mushrooms just go ahead and grab those go ahead and get some more resources coming back to the starter area is a great place to actually get this stuff and uh, i think i'm going to go back up there to oh what's his name uh hern and we're going to craft the padded set here in a second I'm hoping the storm holds off just a little bit longer. Alrighty, Hearn. I need some armor. Let's go with the pants and the arms. And I need more fiber to be able to get the chest piece. So I can just right click on it to put it on. Right click to put on. And now I have some cold protection, which is good because uh, it's getting pretty, pretty angry out here. Let's try and get some more fiber. There we go. Chest piece acquired. Let's throw that on. So now I have the full padded set. If you're wondering how to get your very first uh, helmet, you won't get that until the next set, which is going to be the stone armor. And then you get a stone mask. And it's a pretty cool set. To get that, we just have to go to this other NPC. And this is how you progress the stories. You track down these other NPCs in the game. So I would go to Caleb for the like stone mine, get lots of stone. Uh, get the stone armor you can go up here to drastana i don't know who they are i haven't visited them just yet and then scotty down here will give you another armor set and they will also help you get flint so that's the area you want to go to for that Ooh, it looks like we did not encounter a storm but i know one is coming it's a bright sunny day so let's take advantage of this and get some stuff done 
Let's go back to our workbench. We have a hatchet. We can make a club if we want. We're not going to do that. Let's make a wood sword. You definitely want to grab one of these. Even though it's a wood sword, they actually do quite a bit of damage. And it's going to make fighting those ants a lot easier. Now that we have some a lot of resources, we need to start actually putting a couple of chests down. So I'm just going to throw one right by my bed. Uh, we'll throw two down because there really isn't much storage space here. And we can also start working on the stone cutter. We have a bottle cap and a screw, which we got down there by the little river. And to get stone, we're going to need that pickaxe, but we can't get that just yet. And that's about, that's about all we can do right now. So let's go over here, access our chest. It has just a few slots here. We can throw our wood in there. We can put our bottle cap screw, our traveler's like starter armor in there. We really don't need that. You could just throw it away, to be honest, or drop it. Gonna get rid of the club. Um, here's some food and some ant parts. I'm gonna throw those in there with some resin. All right, let's go uh, do some combat. I'll teach you how to do combat. There's like five different types of weapons in this game. There's like blunt and piercing and edge, things like that. So on the wood sword, if you look at it down there, it shows edge damage and it has that icon. It shows like a sword, like a swifty sword. That is edge damage and specific types of insects are vulnerable to different types of damage. So like the ants, they are pretty weak against edge damage. So a sword would be great for that. Something else like the first boss, which is the rhino, the horned rhino. It's like piercing damage. And then, uh, yeah, so you just match that up to find out what kind of damage they're weak to. You just go up to them and it'll show an icon. Of course, that'll be a lot easier if you're on a peaceful mode, but I'll try to get close enough to a mob and show you. I'm definitely going to keep my sword out. You can block. I think the default is holding E down on your keyboard. It doesn't seem like there's a parry system or anything. You just block and it negates a specific amount of damage. But you're still going to get hit pretty hard. So I try to dodge roll as much as possible. I try to dodge more than I do block. And you, with the sword, you have left click of your mouse to swipe like that. It does okay damage. But you have a heavy attack by hitting right click on your mouse. And I usually start off with that or only use the heavy attack and then dodge. So let's go find an ant. Uh, there's some over here. This guy's pretty weak. If you look at his name, I'm going to get close. You see it has the icon to the left of Carpenter Ant Worker. And it has a little Swifty icon. That's because he's weak at edge damage. So I'm going to use a heavy attack and it's going to one shot that guy. So even though we were having trouble earlier with the little wooden hatchet, the sword makes these things so much easier now. So I can farm up Bugs Limp. Let's try and dodge all this stuff. Whack him. Even the bigger ants we can kill pretty easily. Just one shot. Pick up all the loot, dodge, and kill that one. So not every enemy is going to be one-shotted like that, but the ants are not a problem for us anymore just by grabbing the little wooden sword. But that's the pretty much the basics and almost all there is to know about the combat. You can just dodge. There is sliding if you want. You can block, a heavy attack, and then a simple attack. That's about it. So we're going to do that. Dodge, manage your stamina. That's a big thing. So you always want to dodge and then recover some of your stamina. Wait for them to attack. Once you memorize their movements, it's going to be a lot easier. All right. Looks like we just encountered a uh, Sawyer Beetle. So definitely don't want to take too much damage from this guy. He hits pretty hard. We're going to try and do some heavy attack and then fall back. See, as you see, the light attacks don't really do too well. Uh, piercing attacks are bad against him, and the edge attacks are good against him. We're going to back off. We're going to try and heal. Hit him with the heavy. Back off. He doesn't hit too hard, but he hits fast and repeatedly, so that's a problem. Using a ranged weapon might be pretty decent against him. We're going to hit him with that. We're going to use another bandage here. Let's see what kind of loot he gives us. I might just tank his attacks, to be honest. There we go. Try and uh, get your heavy attack when he's leaning in towards you. There we go. So we finished him off. We got some uh, chitin, some insect fat, and then some beetle something. So we have an ant here. This is a bull ant. These are the guys we need to kill to actually be able to get the uh, pickaxe. 
So luckily he doesn't do... There we go. Oh, <laughs> we almost died. Uh, did we get it? Yeah, we got the bull ant mandible thing. We almost died. It looked like it took me three heavy attacks to actually defeat him. I'll show you on the map location where I'm at. I was not meaning to encounter him just yet, but luckily we did. So on the map, he was over here. So I just crossed the river by jumping a small section. And uh, here's my tree. I just uh, jumped over here and then they were in this area. So they're kind of like a bigger red ant. And uh, you'll see this. It's pretty close to your spawn location if you chose that tree. Jump across the lily pads and then I just went up this way. You're also going to see some ladybugs which are down here. And they do not attack you. But they're fast. So if you don't kill them fast with a heavy attack and then follow up with a fast attack. Oh, whoo. They, uh, they're going to run away and it's hard to catch them. So let's go ahead and get out of this area. It's getting pretty dangerous. One hit and we're done. We got a dragonfly there I don't want to mess with. I know I'm not going to be able to defeat that guy. Let's keep going. We're going to make our pickaxe and then we can get stone. Stone is down here on this little like beach area. So you just go up here and harvest it with your pickaxe. Okay, back at the workbench. Let's see what we need for the pickaxe. We needed uh, one of the bull things. So we're just missing some fiber. Let's see if I have any in my chest. None in that one. And there's some fiber there. Thank goodness because I did not want to have to go all the way back down. We got our pickaxe. We can put it in there. I'm going to put it in my fourth slot. And now we can go get some stone. Once we get the stone, we can then craft the... Let's see. We have to use our hammer. Build. Interactive. We can build the uh, stone cutter, which is going to open up a whole slew of other items. But that's where we're going to end this video. But that is where we're going to end this episode. I hope you guys learned a lot on the next episode or the next video. If you guys want to continue, I already have an idea of what it's going to look like. We're going to start talking to Caleb. We're going to get the stone armor. And then we're going to move into actually heading down here to Scotty. And the first boss is going to be down here. But we're not going to fight him just yet. We're going to have to get some flint. I have a whole guide on how to get flint. But it's going to be down here in the coastline. And once you get flint, that is how you get the, like, uh, better weapons, better armor, and stuff like that. So flint is the way to go, and it's the next wall to actually upgrade beyond these little wooden tools that we have here. We are going to have to do a lot of traveling. So, anyways, I hope you guys check out this game, and I hope you uh, pick it up if you haven't already. It's a fun game. I'm really enjoying it. And they are going to have continued updates for uh, content, things like that. You can tame mounts in this game. It's just the whole survival experience. It's pretty fun. The weather elements is cool. Being a tiny little elf is awesome. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.